Are you considering taking advantage of the booming job market right now and leveraging your skills and talents and moving into a new role? If that's the case, this video is one that you are going to want to watch. Hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Juliana McMillan Wilhoyt, and I am passionate about helping geospatial professionals create a career that they love. I do that in a whole lot of different ways. You can find links in the description below. Um, one of the ways I do that is producing content like this. I uh, speak regularly at different events. Um, um, and I also have a one-on-one -on -one coaching program. So if the things in this video sound interesting to you, I'd love to be able to work one-on-one -on -one with you in that. So first of all, I want to just talk about um, why I'm, I'm making this video. And, and that's because I think that we oftentimes think a lot about salary when it comes to a job description, right? That's what a lot of people negotiate around, right? You, you want to make a particular number and that is really important. And I don't want to um, negate the fact that to a certain extent level, you need to have a certain amount of money to live. However, I think that sometimes we can place too much emphasis on a particular salary number and not take into account the whole entire benefits package. Now, if you follow me on LinkedIn, if you've seen my other videos, I am very, very passionate about the fact that I believe that salary ranges should be listed in job descriptions. You can go watch that other video to find out more about that. So I'm not negating the fact that actually like a salary does matter. I do think though that we can focus too much on the salary in the negotiation or when you're looking and understanding about a job to, and so that's, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So this video is a bunch of different things that I have learned in my experience, my husband's experience, that I just think that should be taken into account when you're looking at a new job. So the first is obviously salary. So you want to make sure, first of all, that it is a salary that you can live off of or that you're willing to make the sacrifices necessary to uh, live off of that salary. But secondly, you need to ask some questions about how often do salary increases happen? Uh, if there's a performance review cycle that salary increases are tied to, would you be eligible in your first year to be um, to, to get that salary increase. So for example, um, if you start a role in January with a company, when is the performance review cycle? And would you be, and when that performance review, review cycle happens, would you be eligible? Because it can be a bummer when you think that, oh, you, they say that you know every year you get a 5% salary increase or a cost of living increase, but you're actually not eligible because you haven't been with the company long enough at that point in time. So the second thing that I think is really important for you to think about are medical benefits. So in the US at least, medical benefits are tied to you or your spouse's job and good medical benefits can actually make a um, be worth a whole, whole lot of money. When I have done coaching with individuals about looking at jobs and understanding you know, the, the, the pros and cons about a jobs, I've actually been really amazed at how few people have really dug in and understood the medical coverage. When I was uh, looking for a new job and when I had been offered one and I asked very specific questions about the medical coverage, I was really shocked when my recruiter within the company wasn't familiar with people asking these questions and didn't have the answers off the top of their head. So here's why I think that medical benefits could can super matter. So the first one is my husband and I are currently going through fertility treatments. Hopefully there will be a little map nerd in our future. Um, and I am so fortunate that his he has amazing insurance through his employer, and we have paid about five hundred dollars out of pocket in addition in addition to our insurance premiums for fertility coverage that would at this point have cost around thirty five thousand dollars out of pocket. Uh, if I had my employer's insurance, we would have had to have paid about $20,000 out of pocket for the fertility treatments that we've had, right? So this is real money that we are talking about at this point that is helping us achieve, um, get, get medical coverage to treat a medical condition that I have, but that also right, will hopefully help us expand our family. And so that's something that is, is super important. 
But, um, but also, if you are on a particular medication, understanding what the cost of that medication is going to be if you switch insurance is really important. Um, right? I take some medications daily and, you know, I've been on a few different insurances. You know, sometimes it's $10 a month for, for it. You know, it's been $50 or $100 a month as well for the medication, depending on the insurance. And so just being aware of what those out-of-pocket costs are going to be for your different medications really could, you know, make, you know, a few thousand dollar salary increase, um, you know, not really be worth as much at, at the end of the day. At the same time, looking at actually what the insurance premiums are going to be and understanding how much, you know, you're actually going to have to pay out of your pocket um, for insurance. Again, that could end up negating some of the things with the salary. Um, another, you know, thing for you to consider and, uh, and to, you know, ask about or to, to look into the insurance is if you're currently using uh, counseling services and your counseling is being subsidized by your insurance or it's being run through insurance is understanding if your new insurance would cover counseling or not. And also what the copay is, right? So if you're going to counseling every other week and you're currently paying $25, but under your new organization's insurance, you'd be having to pay, you know, $100, $125 because it's not covered, right? That's, again, real money over the course of a year and something that you should really, um, uh, you know, something that you should really look into. So some questions I, I think you should ask are, can I see the benefits of the, the plan benefits for, for your company? Um, Again, if you're on a very specific medication, asking to see if you can see what's called the medical formulary to understand that the, what medications are covered and what those out-of-pocket costs are going to be. But also just like looking and you know doing the math and saying, okay, if I am on this insurance, if you know I had my medical issues of this past year, I expect to pay this much out of pocket. Um, and just you know weigh, weigh those things because medical insurance can be really, really good. Um, it can also be not so good. And so that's something that I don't see enough people taking into account. Um, and something that I'm super grateful that my spouse, my, my, my amazing husband has really fantastic insurance. The third thing that you should uh, be looking at and asking about are retirement benefits. So retirement benefits can be hard because it's for the longer term and you know you, you may not, um, you know, that that's just years and years away, but um, retirement benefits really do matter. So um, perhaps you work in local government and you are going to be getting a pension. So if you play the long term, the long game and you stay in local government, you maybe, may, maybe aren't making as much in terms of your salary now, but you are set up well for the future to have that pension and to be taken care of. Whereas in a lot of other organizations, you know, you sort of have to be saving up and then hope for the little bit of social security money that you'll be getting down, down the line. So um, understanding what's called vesting. So vesting is uh, sort of companies will oftentimes match uh, whatever a percent that you put into your uh, 401k every year. So for example, the company that I work for, if I put 5% of my salary every paycheck in, they will match that with five with an extra 5%. So that's also like a 5% extra of my salary that I'm getting by saving for my, for my retirement. If I don't put in money for my retirement, I don't get that match from them though. But what's really important is understanding what's called a vest. So uh, vesting is sort of the, the process of the how long you have to work for your employer to be able to get the full access, um, access the full amount of money that they put in. So um, my employer has an immediate vest. So I could walk away tomorrow and I would get the 5% that they've put in over the course of the past year. But I've worked for other places where I had to work for three years or I had to work for six years. And so that sort of played an important role in terms of thinking about how long I wanted to stay in my old role because I realized that, that was I was actually giving up a whole lot of money by not, you know, by leaving before I had vested. And so it's really important for you to think about you're vesting in your, your current organization as well as understanding that in your next role, right? So maybe you know that this is a stepping stone role and you don't wanna be there for, you, you don't see yourself there for a long period of time. And so 
if they have a six year vesting period, then perhaps a 10% match that they might be giving you isn't actually something that you would be able to take advantage of um, because you're gonna leave you know, but before, the, before that period of time is up. Uh, another thing for you to, uh, to consider are just some of their family planning and family benefits. So per parental leave is currently all over the news and we're seeing the importance of that, but really understanding what does that look like? Uh, if you, especially if you're new to the organization, so, so do they set aside a chunk of time that you get for parental leave? Is it something that comes out of your sick pay or your, your sick time? Um, you know, are you, are you given 12 weeks? Are you able to take longer than 12 weeks? Understanding that is something that's really important. Even if you aren't thinking about having kids in this moment, I really think that understanding an organization's parental leave policy is something that's able to tell you a whole ton about their culture and how they value families, how they value work-life balance. And so that's something that I would encourage you to just ask some questions about. At the same time, I would encourage you to ask about what their adoption benefits are. Again, in the US, adoption is super, super expensive and uh, families are made in all sorts of different ways. And that um, just understanding, are they willing to help contribute to uh, growing your family through adoption? Um, you know, different, com different organizations may uh, support you with $5,000 or, or $10,000 um, matches towards your expenses. And again, th those are just things that help give you a data point into an organization's culture. It's not, I'm not telling you to, to not take a job if they don't, so, you know, uh, provide adoption assistance. Again, it's just, these are small things for you to look at. But uh, another thing that I, I think has, a huge impact in terms of how this role can really set you up for the future is how the organization values professional development. So some questions that I would ask uh, in an interview or sort of once you have the offer in hand uh, going to your boss is, is in this role, would I be able to attend any conferences? Um, would I be limited to local conferences or would there be support for attending national conferences? I have learned so much by attending both local conferences, but by also being able to attend things like the Ezra User Conference uh, in, in San Diego, as well as other conferences um, like the American Planning Association Conference. Those things were so helpful. Um, I was able to meet people and there was a lot of collaboration that happened. And that was something that I was really thankful that my role supported, uh, my work supported me in, in going to those. Um, so asking those questions, you know, and you can then figure out, okay, how important, how important is this? Um, you know, it is, is then uh, something that's for, for you to then figure out. Another question for you to ask is, is there support for training in this role? Uh, what does an annual training plan look like, right? Are they just sort of like, well, yeah, we support your learning, go on YouTube, or is there a set aside budget? Or how would you go about asking uh, for money uh, to support your, your training? Um, you know, how would you as my boss mentor me? I have a goal to be a GIS manager, senior analyst, whatever it may be in three years. How would you work with me to help get me to that level? I think that being really honest about what your goals are can, can be so helpful to managers as they can then help guide and direct you along the way, but that it also um, really you know helps you you know sort of know this is where I'm going and this is how I see this role um, working working on that path. And having that open and honest conversation with your manager can really help set up a really good open and honest dialogue. And then the last thing that I think you should consider are uh, just some things about what the work culture is. So, you know, is this a place that will um, be, that will align with what some of your personal values are? Um, or is it a, you know, is it a place where you think you're gonna actually clash with, with some of the things that happen organizationally? So, you know, some questions for you to consider are how flexible is this role and how actually do you define flexibility, right? I've heard people talk about how flexible their roles are or how flexible their work is. And I'm like, wow, your definition of flexible and my definition of flexible are two very, very different things. And so just making sure that you are utterly clear if like something like flexibility is, you know, um, super important to you. 
um, asking some super specific questions about the, the team. So what is the team like? What is the team dynamic? What does teaming look like? Um, and, you know, that, that again is something that, you know, can, can tell you a lot about what your work environment is going to be. And a last question that I think more people need to be asking is how do you respond to fires or urgent needs that come up that, that happen within the course of this job? Will I be expected to drop my personal plans? And how often do these fires happen? So for me, I am all about work-life balance and I am not a fan of having to make alterations to my personal plans um, because of a lack of planning on the part of someone else. But some roles require that. My spouse works in public health and that has been the past two years is responding to fires and crises. So, you know, it, again, this is a personal preference question, but I think it's really helpful if you have that data point. So I hope that this video has been useful to you, that you are getting an idea of some things for you to consider that go beyond just your salary uh, when you are having conversations about taking on a new role. I know that I covered a whole lot in this video. Uh, if you go to my website, tabulaspatial.com, I'm actually gonna be putting together a little uh, checklist for you that's going to outline these questions and more for you uh, to take into you know conversations uh, about future jobs. Obviously, you don't have to ask all of these questions, but you know, just thinking through some of them can be a really, really helpful um, as you think about new roles. I would also be honored to work with you if you are thinking about making a career transition in the coming year. Uh, I love working one-on-one -on -one with individuals to help you create a specific action plan to get into the type of role that you love. I am so honored that you have watched this film. It mean a lot to me if you liked this video, commented, and subscribed to my channel. Um, comments and, and likes are actually really helpful data points for me for understanding if the uh, content that I'm producing is of use to you. So again, I am just really thankful that you are here.